Let's talk about events. So why don't we pull in a file? Um, do we want to use Elixir? Not yet. Let's just reference a main.js file within the public directory. Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's find the video. You learned how to do that already. Video.js. And we called it my video. Okay, so just to make sure it's all working, I will log this to the console. And if we go back to Chrome, give it a refresh, open Chrome DevTools, there's our player. So it's working. Okay, so first things first, we're going to say video when you're all set to go. So think of this almost like video.js's version of uh, jQuery's document.ready. Same basic idea. Once everything's loaded and processed and ready to go, then how do we want to proceed? So maybe something as simple as this, just for fun. Let's set a timeout, maybe after three seconds, and we're just going to play the video. So we could do this.play, but I do have a function here. Eh, you know what? We have a modern browser. Let's just use arrows here. And that way, um, that this keyword isn't rebound or reassigned. But yeah, anyways, when the video is ready to go, hold on for three seconds, and then just start playing it. Okay, so let's go back here. We're going to turn off controls just for fun, and because we can. Give it a refresh. One, two, three, and it starts playing. So yeah, you can see the API is, is incredibly simple to work with. Like maybe we want to have fun and say, um, this is going to be kind of crappy. Let's say prompt, how fast should we go? And then I'll save that to speed. We'll then set the playback rate equal to whatever they pass in. And then, yeah, we can play the video if we want. Yeah, kind of stupid, but just to show you how to work with it. Okay, so we want, how about 5.0? And it plays super, super, super fast. Cool. Okay, what else? Um, so this is when the video is ready to go, but you may also just want to do something as simple as when the video is done playing, then proceed in some form. Okay, video.onEnded, then handle it somehow. So why don't we just do a simple alert that says the video has ended. Now, once again, as you can imagine, the, the events you can listen for, pretty obvious. You can listen for when the video has ended, or when it plays, or when it pauses, or when the volume changes. Most of the things you would want to listen for, you can listen for. And you can probably guess what the name is. Anyways, let's go back to Chrome. Give it a refresh. Ah, you know what? We don't have the controls. Let's bring them back. Controls. Refresh. Play it. Turn off the audio. Go to the end. And we should see an alert. And we do. That's how that works. So if you can imagine, for, for Laracast, this is the sort of thing I would use to mark a lesson as complete. So if you watch a video and you get to the end, well, yeah, I could make you click on the completed button. In fact, let me just show you. View lessons, how about this one? Yeah, you could manually complete it, or I could do that for you. So let's try it. Give it a refresh, it's not complete. Watch a video, go to the end. Four, three, sorry to make you watch so long. One, there you go. And now the lesson is automatically completed. So exactly what I'm doing there is this, basically. Listen for when the video has ended, and then we submit an AJAX request. You can use whatever you want. If you're using view, you could do view.http. You could do jQuery.post or jQuery.ajax. Send through the ID of the video. Then you have a, a URL on your server that listens for that and then updates the record for the authenticated user. So why don't we look at maybe one more event. How about when the user pauses the video, we could say the video has been paused. Of course, you can do this. Refresh, play it, pause it, and you get the alert. You can even track how much time is remaining, and that could be useful. So we could say you have this dot remaining time left to watch, and that will be stored in seconds. Refresh, watch it, pause it, and we have, we've won around it, of course, but it looks like 44 seconds left. Or down here, play, pause, and you have 2.12082999, you get the idea. 
All right, let's call it a day for, for this lesson. So listening for when the user plays or pauses or stops or changes the volume or, or any of those things, very, very easy. Just add dot on and then the event name. And once again, that's gonna delegate to the HTML5 video events. And I have a link to that here. So yeah, all the different events. As you're playing, when you're seeking, that can be stuff like this. All that stuff can be done. When you play, pause, change the rate, resize the video. You get the idea. I'll see you in the next lesson.